Hey guys, so today you guys are going to do a little activity where you're going to uh, draw a bunch of heads and I'm going to teach you a few things. In the video it says you can follow along if you want. I think it would be a good idea to follow along. When I start drawing those six heads, just draw right along with me. You don't have to draw the exact same character. You can make up your own character, uh, but you will benefit by just following along with me uh, and it'll probably be less boring too. All right, so we're going to try and do a few different things. So I'm going to start with this bleach sheet. Um, and then here, remember, we were talking about the three-quarter view versus the straight profile. We're still looking to draw that three-quarter view today. So that's something we're going to focus on. Um, put my sheet on top of the bleach sheet. That way, if later when I'm going to ink, if I forget what I'm doing, I won't have to worry about um, it bleeding through. So I'm going to draw a character here, circle and you. Okay. Draw my cross. Notice how my cross lines always have a little bit of curve towards the outside edge. You have to think about a ball. If I drew lines on a ball, how would those lines change depending on where I turn the ball? So those curving lines would actually represent like uh, the dimension of the ball because the ball is not flat. Even if the lines are flat and straight, those lines would turn into curves as you turned it through space. So I'm just darkening these so you can see them better. Okay. So I'm just thinking about how these curved lines can actually help support it, and I'm not doing this. That's very bad. That's something that, like, I wouldn't even want you to do in first grade. So if you're doing this, stop doing this. This is very bad. Okay? So anyway, I've got my circle in you. I've got a little curve to my um, cross, and I'm going to draw some eyes. Notice how I'm making them the same height, but this one's getting a little cut off by the nose, so I made it shorter this way, but, but up and down it's the same. Get a big nose here. It's kind of like a curved 7 upside down. I just kind of made a 7, but let it be a little curvy. Eyebrow. A smile, his ear, kind of that letter C, backwards letter C, kind of, and then regular letter C connected to that. That's how I draw the ear, just C, C, C. Okay? And you'll play with those shapes and how they interact with each other to create lots of different kinds of ears. Um, and the neck will come out by where the ear attaches to the jaw and under his face. He's got a thicker neck, kind of shows that he's a little, a little beefier, but not super beefy. And the shoulder will come out here and here. You guys see how like the neck is literally in front of the head? So when I'm drawing a neck, a lot of people will do this, and then they'll put their neck like this, coming out of the chin. But that's not really how our necks are. If you look at us from the side, this is kind of like our back. This is our back. This is our chest. Our neck actually comes forward. When I think about the circle in you, I like to think about how... My spinal cord runs up the back and attaches at the base of that circle because that circle actually represents the part of your skull that holds your brain. So my neck's actually in front. When I'm looking this way, I got my face, then my neck, then my body's kind of, and my shoulders are kind of behind that. So I'm thinking about that overlap when I'm drawing those necks. So I just want to have my neck kind of like 
in a three quarters view closer to the back, you know, and and not just coming straight out of the chin like this kind of thing. Because that's bad. You don't want that. Okay? It's also the same person that always forgets to draw ears and eyebrows. Make sure all your characters have ears and eyebrows. It makes a difference. Maybe a little lip shadow. Expression lines. So you could play with a lot of stuff. Actually, even take a derpy character like this and elevate it. Um, anyway, so I got my guy. His neck's good. I'm going to give him some hair. So he's going to have a little sideburn up near the eyebrow, and it kind of comes back, makes a hairline like this. Now this is the part that's painted on. Remember we talked about the painted on hair and then the hair that's behind. So now I'm going to draw the hair that's behind. This hair is really short, so it's going to stay almost painted on. And then up here, I'm going to give him some hair that comes up from there. Okay? Um, now... His face, it's just a simple shape. It's this and this. And really, I want to have some more complexity to represent, you know, the structure of the face. So I'm going to come down, and I'm going to bump out to the eyebrow, bump back, bump out. Now, I've got all these curves and these bumps, and someone who's new might look at that and say, oh, yeah, it's some curves and bumps on the face, relatively random. I'm going to put some curves and bumps, too, on my drawing. And so then they go like this. They're trying to copy the amount of curves and bumps. Oh, look at that ear. It's just hanging off like a tag. I'm going to actually try and fix that, make some overlap. So that my ear is actually overlapping in front of the head. Maybe have the jaw actually look like it's going towards the ear, right? Um, but these bumps, then I might put my eye here. Another eye here, a nose, and my mouth. Okay? But there's a problem with that because that's not where those bumps should line up with the features. Those bumps actually represent real things happening with the skull. So when I think about this human skull, I've got a circle, right? I've got a U shape in the front. And this is where my spinal cord goes. Um, I've got two eyes, holes, or dents, really. They're not really holes. There are holes in those, but they're not really holes. And this bone comes out, this bone comes out. Skeleton nose there. These are the front teeth, the back teeth, back teeth on the bottom, front teeth on the bottom, maybe some of the other side showing a little bit. So you guys can see how I've drawn this skull, and we all understand that in those holes, in those Dense, sorry, is where the eyeballs sit. Does anyone think the eyeballs go somewhere other than in those holes? If you do, I'm worried about you, and I'm curious what science you're in. But um, anyway, so the eyes are in the holes. And those holes, those bumps on the face actually represent, they're not really dense, really the bone comes, well they are, but bone comes up and around the brow here, and then the cheekbone wraps around the eye socket and drops into those front teeth. You guys see that? And so the bump for the cheekbone and the bump for the eye bone, brow bone come out, and then where the eyes are, it dents in. So I can look here, and I've got the dent in where the eyes are, bump out where the brow is. In fact, I even change direction right here to show that the brow bone's coming out like that. And then my cheekbone's coming out, and I let it kind of real subtly curve back in and come to the chin. Notice how my curves don't look like this. They're not super exaggerated. And sometimes 
when I have a line like this straight line of the face, if I just think about going a little, sneaking off in either direction, but not going so far that I'm like going way off the page, that will help me understand how to build that structure. So that those face bumps on there should correlate to the different bones of the skull. So when I'm drawing my cartoon head, I don't want to just leave it. I don't want to just go like this. And leave the side of the face looking all plain and weird like this. I want to make sure that I capture the brow and the cheek. To add a little sophistication and a little realism to my cartoon. So what I want you to do right now, and you're going to have five minutes, is I want you to draw a cartoon head that has the correct face bumps. And if you do it quickly, um, before the five minutes is up, draw another one. And look, I'm going to even draw a little line there, implying that brow bone change just to match this one. You guys see that? And in fact, this eyebrow's up a little. I'm going to draw two. Like, not only is it the brow bone, but the skin is being pushed up by the muscle of the eyebrow pushing up. Okay? So, um, you guys go ahead and draw yours. You've got five minutes to draw a head with correct skull bumps. And you'll upload it at the end of today's um, process.
All right, so we've covered a lot of things. Features of the face, how to build using the circle and you, the cross, the neck, the skull bumps. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how some of that stuff can work um, for you to create something that's cool and interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing six heads. Okay, and I'm going to start with the circles. And the use. And I'm going to try and make them all the same. You're welcome to try and follow along with me now, or you could do this during the drawing part, but I'm trying to get them to be all about the same. Okay, and then from these four relatively the same shapes, I'm going to draw a cross. And all the, the vertical lines will be the same. So all the vertical center lines, I'm going to make them the same-ish. Obviously, I'm not going to get hung up on them being exactly the same. Okay, now I'm going to put the cross here. But then I might also put the cross way up here. Might put the cross way down here. Um, I might put the cross here, but I'll do something different. Or I might put the cross up here and do something different. Um, and then here I'm going to go real crazy, and it's probably not going to turn out good, but it's just an exercise. So I'm going to make my cross kind of wiggly waggly. Okay, so I've got all these same shape heads, but different orientations of the cross, more or less. And I'm going to draw a character, and it's going to be kind of a basic character. So, um, keep some mostly round eyes. I'm going to draw one first. Well, simple U and uh, our nose. So remember the nose. We didn't get too far into the nose. I'll jump back here real quick. The nose, you have the tip of the nose that goes all the way and connects to the bridge. Now, sometimes this part is bigger. So sometimes you might have like a big bulgy nose. And then you've got the nose flaps that go on either side. And then you've got the nostrils that go like this. Okay. Those are the parts of the nose. So if I'm drawing the nose from the side, I might just see the tip, and then I might see the nostril flap, and the nostril might come, and it might connect to that and become one line, or the flap might wrap around and be a little separated. I might not see the other side unless I have a really big nostrils or a wide nose or something like that. I could put a little line there to help imply the other side of the bridge of the nose, but I'm not necessarily going to do that. Okay? So... Sometimes you have two bumps, but they represent different things. So going like this is not going to work. That's a terrible nose. I don't want to see that nose. Okay, that nose makes me insane. Um, you could draw like a letter J and then curve back from the letter J and then wrap around with a C if you're having trouble. Okay, you guys see that? So that's a way you could do a nose. Alright, so I'm going to give him a mouth. He's going to have just a simple line, a little bit of uh, corner on the one side, the near side, and a lip shadow. Okay? Then I'm going to give him some eyebrows. I'm going to give this guy some shorter, squarer, bushier eyebrows. Okay? And then over here, I'm going to use this line 
and his nose to create the ear. Okay? So I've got his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his eyebrows, his ear. The ear is naturally going to turn into the jaw, give him a little chin bump right here, and then cut up the face, apply the cheek back towards the eye, out to the brow, and out. Now, not everybody's going to be as super angular and sharp as my other character, where the brow bone and the cheekbone were super harsh and exaggerated. Sometimes those things are going to be a little more curvy, a little more subtle. Okay? I'm going to come from the neck, but I'm going to give it a curve because I want him to kind of have a big head, little body. So I'm going to keep his neck a little smaller because I want to imply that it's a kid. One of the ways to imply someone is a kid is changing the proportion of the body and the head. So kids have bigger heads because our eyes and our brains um, do not really grow much during our lifetime, but our nose, our mouth, our ears all keep growing throughout our life. And so to have a grown-up sized brain in a little kid, it makes it look like they've got a big head. And then I'm going to do his hair, little eyebrow, back up towards the eyebrow, I mean a little sideburn, back up towards the eyebrow, coming across, that's the painted on part, right? Remember we talked about the painted on part. And I'm going to come back here, give him some messy hair, and then I'll come down onto his face a little for bangs. Um, and actually, I don't like the way the hair, it looks like he's bald over here, so I'm going to actually make the hair go a little further, Otherwise, I should draw some of that other side hair sticking out the other side, but I think that'll look funny, so I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to give him his eyes, and I can have him looking back at us. So I'm going to do a slight oval, not a pure circle, and a little pupil in there. Okay? And then I'm done. I'm not going to do his shoulders. I'm not going to do a bunch of detail. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Now I'm going to come to this one, and I'm looking at this one got this really high line it's totally different and I'm gonna try and draw this guy this exact character but using this framework so let's see what I can do how that's gonna change it I have a little less room for the eyebrows, so I'm being careful. I'm not messing them up. I'm trying to keep the character, but not make them so um, into the hair. I'm going to need room for that hair. And I'm actually going to give him more head than I did just because I cheated a little um, because it was giving me a hard time. I was worried I was getting too close with those eyebrows, so I gave him his mouth, same kind of neck. There's the hair starting. Can give the hair a little more volume. I don't want to go too far off. So, what did that do to my character? It was the same character, more or less, drew the same features, same general idea, but now a few things happen. He looks a little derpier, he looks a little older, um, maybe he doesn't look quite as bright. There are a lot of things that will change about our perception when you play around with these proportions and mess with them. Let's jump to this one and see what happens here. So 
I've got to have room for the whole, the nose and the whole mouth here, and the chin, and all that. So I'm going to kind of really... Really try and squish all that into that little space. Remember, it's harder to draw small. I kind of added extra detail to this ear. That's a bad idea. Okay, so you guys can see again it changed. He might look younger, he might look uh, more bizarre, but he also might be kind of more brainy. A lot of different things you could do with that. So let's try something different, but on the same cross as we've got here, okay? So here, I'm going to make his eyes big. And... If you don't already know, when you're drawing something from the, straight from the front, there's a whole eye that can fit between their eye. That's how much space is between the eyes is one whole eye. So you might want to increase the space if you increase the size of the eyes. So think about how you can match that in the spacing, not just the eye. There's definitely more room for the nose, so I'm getting it a little away from the eyes. Already it's making me uncomfortable. And looking at me with these big eyes. Ears gonna end up a little bigger because his eyes take up so much more space and they should relate. Again, up to the eyebrow. Eyebrows a lot closer, so I kinda had to change the way I was doing that just a little bit. Less room for the hair, just like the one with the high eyes. No, that's not what I mean. Okay, so you can see it, it again changed the whole character, making the eyes bigger and further apart. Okay, and now this one, I've got another high one. What can I do? Well, I made them bigger and further apart. Let's make everything really small now. I probably am going to need to sharpen my pencil for this. Did not relate the hair to the eyebrow really at all over here, like I have been, because there's so much space that it didn't really make sense. And because his ear is so high up, I'm going to actually move the neck down a little more away from the ear. Or really kind of keep it where it was. These eyes are going to be so small that I need a little room to work here. Okay, so you can see now that by drawing the face smaller, I've changed the whole thing all over again. He's real super chinny. Look at his chin. It's not really prominent. So I can make a lot of different changes. So let's do the last one. 
And again, I told you this one's probably not going to turn out so good. I probably should have curved this a little too. So that... This one's like super tweaked. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this one off. And then uh, what I want you guys to do is finish yours. Hopefully you've been following along. Uh, you could have done them the same way I did or you could have come up with your own. But when they're all done, I want you to ink them correctly. Don't ink your construction work. And then I want you to erase all your pencil lines. And then I want you to try and color them by the end of class.